All right, all right. I do believe I'm on. Amen. If you can hear me, say yes. Amen. <clears throat> can everyone hear me? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Lexi. Good morning, everyone. God bless you this morning. All right. Okay, everybody. Good, good. This is Reverend Essie of New Birth Ministries. And I just want to start out by saying God is good. God is awesome. I'm so glad that God is our God. Amen, aren't you? Hallelujah. He brought us through a lot of things. Um He's good. I was just thinking yesterday about all the things that God brought me through. When we sit back and think about everything that God brought us through and saved us from, it gives you a reason to praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. It gives you a reason to praise him. This is Reverend Essie New Birth Ministries with Morning Coffee in Heaven with Jesus, Sunday, April 14, 2024. Praise the Lord. The sun is shining, which I'm very glad of because we've been having a lot of rain. Please keep everybody in prayer that went through all that rain and businesses are closing down and it was just terrible to see that. Just because we didn't go through it doesn't mean that other people aren't suffering Amen. So let's take a sip of our drink, your coffee, your tea, what have you. Amen. As long as it's kosher, <laughs> let's take a sip. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Um, I want to open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, Father God, Yahweh, Yehovah. We thank you and we love you. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for bringing us here today, opening up our eyes this morning. Regardless of what our bodies may be going through, we're going to keep on going through and we're going to keep on making it and getting victory through you, through Jesus that you sent to us, your son, that we may have victory over sin, hell, and death. And when we mention sin, we're also talking about illnesses and sicknesses. You did not mean for us to have that. So we're praying for each, everybody today around the world. We're praying for everyone who is struggling, um, especially those non-believers. who We pray that they begin to believe in Jesus and see that he is the only way. He is only, he's the only way to freedom, to heaven. Father God, use me to preach this word. Have your way, not my will, not my way, but your will and your way. Use me as a vessel to preach your word, and I thank you. I'm honored to do so, Father God, and I'll continue to do so until you call me home or until you send Jesus down to us. Amen. It is an honor. So all the prayer requests that we receive, we give to you. All the You see the prayer requests that we receive from uh, pri we see privately or through prayer groups, or, or what have you. We give them all to you. That's the best thing we can do. We cannot take them into our own hands, and neither do we want to. We give them to you, Father. So bless each and every person that comes on today, each and every person that's listening through these different streams that this is streaming through. Bless them all, and if any of them need Jesus, lay it on their hearts to come to Jesus before it is too late to do so. In your holy name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So, I am going to be preaching from Ezekiel 44. If you want to turn or write in your notes, if you're taking notes, what have you. Ezekiel chapter 44. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares to you. If you want, sing it with me. Hallelujah. 
Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. People are out there looking for things all over the world, and they're looking at all the wrong things. What they need is Jesus first, and everything else will follow. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and worship the Lord every time you can. Whenever you praise the Lord and worship the Lord, not only does he love it, the devil hates it. So that makes it great. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm reading from, I'll start with a little description of Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel, well, we all know that Ezekiel saw the wheel. I'm sure you heard that, especially when a little kid growing up. Ezekiel is the one that saw the wheel, y'all. Amen. Um, it's a source. This book is a source of apocalyptic um, tradition. And in it, you will see he has a lot of descriptions of cherubim, angels. In fact, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Actually, in uh, Ezekiel 44, you're going to start out with the angels. Amen. And they call him the father of Judaism. He, Ezekiel was a priest and a visionary. And when you're a visionary, you see things that other people don't see. And God uses you in that way. Holly, it's a blessing to be that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Ezekiel 44. Visions of God. Okay, these are, he's having visions of God. Amen. And when you're a priest, a prophet, a teacher, what have you, when God shows you something in a vision, it's real. It's different. It, sometimes it's, it's so different you can't explain it to anybody else. They wouldn't understand. They would have to be called to understand. What this book is mainly talking about is ministers messing up. And I'm not going to cut on anybody. I'm not the one to mention names or anything like that. I will mention incidences, but I don't mention names because I wouldn't want anybody to mention my <laughs> Amen. The Lord says, love people. Don't dog them, right? Amen. So <laughs> visions of God. If, and I'm going to read. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing first or verse by verse. It depends on how the Holy Spirit leads me. Amen. So in verse 1. Then it says uh, ordinances for the priests. Okay, this is God's ordinances for the priests. And he's telling them how to be. There are too many priests out there that want to be, but they don't know how to be. Amen. They don't wait on God. It says, then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me. Notice he said, then said the Lord unto me. He's having a heavenly vision. This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. When God shuts a door, y'all, how many of you know when he shuts a door, it's shut? It, some, some of you out there are trying to do something, and God didn't call you to do it, and you're wondering why it's not turning out right, because the door, that door is shut. Follow the Spirit of God. Not, don't follow your own, amen, your own self. Follow God, hallelujah. And when God opens a door, it's open. No matter who is jealous of you, no matter who dislikes you, when God opens up a door for you, it's open. It's going to remain open until he shuts it. So, you know, woe to your enemies, <laughs> you know, who, who are upset about the things that God's been putting you through and helping you through. And the more they try to mess with you, the more God blesses you. Amen. Because if that door is open, it's open only to you. Amen. The Bible says what God giveth no man can taketh away. Hallelujah. I don't care how big they are, how rich they are, where they came from what race they are, what, if they're in government, or if they're just a, a regular person, okay, they cannot stop you. They can attempt to stop you, but with God, all things are possible. And when he does something for you, nobody else can stop it unless he says it's okay. Amen. It is for, verse 3, 
It is for the prince, the prince. He shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate and shall go out by the way of the same. Amen. Ezekiel was having visions of God. In verse 1, when he speaks of the word he, he's speaking of an angel. Notice that he didn't say she. Much to everybody's chagrin, he didn't say she. We speak about God. We speak about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and angels as in the male term. And that doesn't mean he doesn't like females. Amen? Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have made them. Right? If we focus on God more and pay more attention to him than ourselves, folks, we too can have these type of visions. You can have visions. Some of you may have had visions and didn't even know you had them. Amen? With God, all things are possible, as I said. The angel told him that the gate was shut and no man can open it or interact because the Lord God of Israel had entered in by it. Therefore, it shall be shut. Amen. When God opens a door, it's open and no man can shut it. And when he shuts a door, it's shut and no man can open it. This is exactly what he does for us out of love. God loves you. Think about the times in your life when things happened and, and it might have been good. And you wanted it to keep happening, but then after a while, it happened, and you enjoyed it, but after a while, that door shut. You couldn't do it anymore because God was moving you on. You couldn't enjoy that thing anymore, or that relationship anymore, because God was moving you on. And even in churches, you might go to a church, it's awesome, and you enjoy it there, but then God might call you elsewhere. Amen. So go to church, enjoy church, but just because you decided to start going somewhere else doesn't make you a bad person. If you're following the spirit of the Most High God, God is moving you on, and he may even be calling you to be an evangelist. Amen? You don't leave a church because you're mad at the pastor or because they said something you didn't like or their actions or the way they live their life or blah, blah, blah. You only follow the spirit of the most high God. Amen. And if he has you staying somewhere for a long time, which a lot of people have done, they've been in churches 50, 60 years, more than that. Amen. Even through generations, then you stay. That, that, what is that one song? Um. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will move like David moved. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will move like David moves. See, always move with the Spirit of the Most High God. He's not going to take you anywhere bad. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 3, it speaks of the prince. And you notice it repeated, the prince twice, which is in Strong's H5387. Okay, if you, uh, everybody, uh, ones who were writing notes or whatever, um, strong concordance, which means nasi. It's not like the cartoon, nasi. It, well, actually, it's N A W dash S E E. Okay, and uh, from 50, uh, H, which is Hebrews, 5375, it means properly an exalted one. When, you, when, you, when God's telling you the prince is going to enter that gate, when he's, he's meant to go in and sit and eat bread, it's the exalted one, okay? The chief, the king, sheik, what have you, the chief, cloud, governor, prince, ruler, it's meant for rulers to go in, hallelujah, to God's temple, amen? It says, it is for the prince, the prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate 
and shall go out by the way of the same. Amen. God always makes a way. Amen. And in verse four, we see the glory of the Lord filled the house of the, of the, the house of the Lord. Amen. And he fell upon his face. He says in verse four, then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. Let me ask you this question. How many, how many places have you gone to? How many churches have you gone to where people are praising and worshiping the Lord and falling upon their faces for God? If you go into a church Okay, no, no names here needed. But if you go into a church and it's dry and it's too peaceful and too quiet, not even peaceful, un uncomfortable, peaceful, where you can't say amen. You, you feel like if you say amen, everybody's going to stare at you like you're crazy. You know, the, the Lord is most likely not there, folks. Amen. When God shows up, there is an action. When God shows up, there is an action. You just can't sit there and say, oh, cool. Hi, God. You know, something's going to happen. You, God's got, the, the spirit is, is so full. He's, he's going to fill you and you're going to say amen. You're going to move. You're going to fall down on your face. You're going to. Some people, you see people, a lot of people in church rocking. Did you ever notice a lot of Christians rock? I believe that even comes from uh, Jewish roots, you know, from, from, from uh, Israel. As you watch them, they rock as they're praying. Amen. Because when you're praying to the Lord and when you're hearing the word of God, it should move you in some kind of way. If it doesn't, you're not paying attention. Amen. You, he fell on his face because of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord should be somewhere. Amen. That's godly reverence. And how many people do not give him godly reverence? When God shows up, you have no other alternative but to move in some kind of way or fall on your face in humility. The problem is we're not showing humility much anymore. Everybody's so high and mighty that nobody puts God where he should be. High and mighty, not us. Amen. Be humble before your king, your Lord. Be humble before your savior, your father, and your God. I believe today that there are too many people standing up to God instead of bowing down to God. Amen. You bow down to God and you stand up to your enemies. Those are the ones that are trying to stop you from having a relationship with God. The, the ones who are trying to stop you from living peacefully. The ones who are trying to stop you from speaking about Jesus. We are being told right now, right now people don't want to believe it. We're being told not to speak about Jesus. And if you remember any of you in the Bible, I believe it was in Acts, where they were told, don't even, they were put in jail. Okay? And, and they were told, do, I believe it was Paul. And they were told, do, we'll let you out. But do not preach Jesus. And they're doing it to us now. There are certain platforms that if you put the name of Jesus and Israel, there's something else. I can't remember. My daughter and I was talking about this the other day. If you print or put anything that deals with Israel or Jesus on there. Oh, the uh, the uh, um, the prayer, the Lord's what we call the Lord's prayer. There are people who have had that taken off of their pages. I'm one of them. Amen. And there's something that if you mention Israel, I believe they take it off your page or they put a strike against your, your page or your channel or whatever. They, hey, it's happening, folks. Amen. Don't wait for it to happen. It's happening right now. Whose report will you believe? Stand up on the Lord God's side. They're not playing and neither should we be. Stand up to the enemy. Amen. Nowadays, people stand up to God and bow down to demons. You hear it every day. They bow down to demons and some of them know they're demons. Some of them don't walk in blindly. Amen. They're looking for that temporal power, a power that doesn't last long at all. The enemy will give you that power you're looking for, for only a min minimal amount of time. He just wants to open up that door so he can use you, steal your soul and stop you from going to heaven. 
Amen. Church, we have to get back to the old times and remember how to praise God. Remember how to worship God. How to worship our creator. Too many people nowadays are giving kudos to the universe. And did you, when people worship the universe, well, the universe told me this and the universe gave me that. When they are giving kudos to the universe and speaking about the universe as though it were God, they are literally worshiping the createe more than the creator. And I'm afraid a lot of them are going to make it to heaven. When some of those people get to heaven, they say, but, but we believed in, we, we believed in you. We told people about God, little G. Yeah, he's going to say, I know you not. Get away from me. I know you not. No, we don't worship. The universe is not our creator. The creator of the universe is, uh, is not our God. The creator of the universe is our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's go to verse six. In verse six, he's telling Ezekiel about how rebellious the house of Israel is. And speaking of their many abominations. Let's read four, five. I'll read five and then go to six. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning the ordinances of the house of the Lord, and all of the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. And in verse six it says, And thou shalt say to the rebellious, Rebellion, the Bible says, is as witchcraft. Shadow ban. Thank you, Lex. That's what they call it. You get shadow banned. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, verse 6, he says, And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations. Okay? He is speaking to Israel about their abominations. Hold on, let me do something here. And he's speaking to us about our abominations as well. Let's see if I can add something here. I want to show you something. It's something that I got from Strong's. Hold on one minute. Let's see if I can do this right. Okay. Give me one second here. I want to show you something. Uh, for all of you who are taking notes, amen. So you can add this to your notes. Bearing your iniquity. All right. There we go. If you can read this, I don't know if you, I can't make it any bigger. If you can read this, uh, and he says, verse, uh, your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart. This is what they're bringing, and they're doing it today. They're bringing all this into the church today. Amen. Those strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. These people, it, a lot of people in church today, churches today, they're still walking according to their flesh and not according to the spirit of the most high God. And they're attending Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And they're still not um, apologizing, not repenting of their sins. They're just sitting up in the church, sin and all, just listening to the word and going back, just being a number for the pastor. Oh, we have 530 people. Yeah, how many of them are saved? What are they coming to your church for? Amen. Uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it. God says we are polluting his sanctuary with all of this new stuff. People aren't repenting. They're just saying, well, I go to church. Yeah, but are you saved? Everybody that goes to church is not saved. That's why I do the altar call, so to speak, at the end every time I speak. I, because there might be somebody out there that might be moved by the word or the Holy Spirit speaking to them, their hearts while I'm preaching, hopefully. Amen. And they want to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, polluted even my house when you offer my bread, the fat and the blood. 
and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. People are breaking God's covenant every day because of their sins. There are people who are sitting up in the house, what they call the house of God, still practicing their sins and don't care who knows it. And they're not going out of pride. They're not going to repent. God says, repent. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. God wants us to turn from our wicked ways, not continue in them. Amen. That's why they talk about preachers so bad because we preach. Pardon my expression. We preach the hell out of them. And that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. We're supposed to lead them to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's supposed to clean them up. The Holy Spirit's supposed to use us. He uses us to clean people up. Amen. And verse 80 says, And ye have not kept the charge of my holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Amen. They're doing the things that's going on now in God's house is for their selves. Amen. He begins to tell them what they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. He says they have broken all of his practice, I should say, all of his abominations. He begins to tell them who he allows to minister and who to minister to him. Amen. God calls whom he wants to call. Amen. God chooses his ministers. His ministers don't choose. Well, ministers, so-called quote unquote ministers don't choose him. Amen. You have to be called. Hallelujah. These verses contain interesting insights concerning the Levites. Whereas we know Levites were, were, uh, Cohen, they call it Cohen, C O H E N, sometimes K or C O H A N, sometimes K O H. Amen. Amen. God recalls Israel's past sins of bringing the unclean, uncircumcised, unholy strangers and idols in his former sanctuary in Jerusalem, polluting the holy places. Here God reveals that in Israel's previous rebellion, or should we say rebellions, even the Levites, the high priests, went astray when they followed idols and note. He notes that they will bear that iniquity and be limited in their ministerial duties. Amen. And I think when I read this, I think about um, uh, Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man on earth. Amen. He had, he, he had everything a man could want. God, he was just, he had everything. Gold, silver, houses, and land. Solomon was the wisest one on earth, and because of following idols, he went with women who were not part of Israel. Amen. Who did not believe in the, who did not believe in the same God he did, and that was his downfall. He followed his flesh. See, the women were pleasing him fleshly. So he began to fall for all of their traps, all of the devil's traps. He began to go to their temples and worship with them to their false gods. He was, how can you serve a mighty God and go to false gods and turn on him and just begin to believe in what is fake? You want to talk about fake news? All those gods are fake. See? So the Levites even began to mess up. God had to check them. And sometimes when you hear people talk about sabbaticals, this is when, when a sabbatical is when a preacher sits down for a while or, or, or just, you know, refrains from preaching for a while, has somebody else to take their place, his or her place. Okay, when you hear about that, it could be because they need to get back to their first love. Maybe they are lacking in something. Maybe that preacher's lacking in some way. Amen. But not always. That's not always the case, though. Some 
take a sabbatical just to rest. You don't know how much energy is used for a preacher to preach the word, not just preach it, but to study the word. I have to admit there's times I need to study more. Actually, we have to stay in the word. Amen. And sometimes preachers take a sabbatical because they're tired and they literally need to get back in touch with God. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and there's some people, amen, who don't take care of the house of God, but they always want the house to take care of them. People don't take care of God, worship God, praise God, serve God, but they always want God to do something for them as though he's a genie in a bottle. Amen. Do how many people, do you know anybody that treats God like he's a genie in the bottle? Amen. The Levites will be permitted to minister in the outer court to guard the gates and offer sacrifices at the altar, but will not be allowed to minister with the holy things in the most high place. Let's go to verse 11 to 13. And it says, yet, let me see. Yeah, yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Because they ministered unto them before their idols, all right, and caused the house of Israel to fall. How many ministers today are causing the church to fall? How many ministers today representing the kingdom of heaven who are sinning and causing people to fall spiritually? God sees it. Amen. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. And this is what I have up here that I put. Uh, you might see it for those. You, you can see it hopefully on the screen. Okay. And it is. Is this the Nazi? Let me see. Let me bring it up. There we go. Nasi. N-A-W-S-A-W. Nasal. Oh, Nasal. Amen. A primitive root to lift. Um, absolutely and relatively arise, able to armor, to bear, to bring forth, to burn, carry away, cast, contain. Desire ease. They will contain all of their iniquity. They're going to wear all of their iniquity. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They are going to yield, bear it, carry it. See, when you caught yourself doing something that you know is wrong and you think that God, that's okay. God's going to forgive me. You know, he's a forgiving God. One of David's sons was like that too. Talked about, I mean, yeah, David, King David, his son, he did anything he wanted to do. He kept sinning, raped a sister and everything else. He said, that's okay. Our father is forgiving. Amen. And look what happened to David's sons. Amen. And this is what people, people treat God like that. That's okay. God is forgiving. I'll be okay. No, no you can't treat God like that. Amen. He said, they'll bear their iniquity. And verse 13 says, and they shall not come near unto me. Huh? How many people feel like they can't hear God? How many people have prayed to God and they didn't get their answers because you're doing something and you cannot approach God in that sin? You have to repent. Many people are not getting healed. Many people are not getting what they want in life. Many people are not meeting that husband or that wife or that good job or blah, blah, blah. Because they are in sin. God's not accepting it. Be holy for I am holy. He's not playing. He said, and they shall not come near to me to do the office of the priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things. <laughs> Amen. In the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. This reminds me of the churches that are allowing people who they know are sinners. They know good and well that these people have not repented. They should not be having, they should not be on a praise and worship team. They should not be in a choir. They should not even re keep coming every Sunday 
unless they are showing signs of repentance. You cannot sit in a good church you wearing the same bearing, let's say you're bearing, bearing the same sin year after year. How long does it take for a person to repent? There are things going on in God's church, and we know he, he doesn't like it. We know good and well he doesn't like it. But just to keep the numbers, many pastors will keep them. Because they don't want their numbers to go down. They don't want that offering plate to go low. Amen. These pe- a lot of churches leave these people in position because they have money. God's talking to them. You might have that building. You might have those candles, those chairs, and that carpet. But you are not. Uh, enter- you're, not you're not talking to God. God's presence is not there. Amen. You might have went to school and studied. But. God's anointing is not there. God's anointing is not on them. Because they're sinning. The pastors, the Levites, the teachers, the priests are sinning along with the people who are sinning in the congregation. Do you think the Spirit of God's going to live there? Amen. Verse 14. But I will make them keepers of charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. But, but, but. Verse 15, but the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, they were trusted, amen, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. So obviously they did a good job because he's calling on them again. They shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, said the Lord God Almighty. See, the ones who stay uh, with God, the ones who stay faithful to God. Amen. Are the ones that God can trust to do his will. They, the others did their own will. God wants people that's going to do his will. Amen. They shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me and near to his. How you want to get close to God? Don't sin. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he said, be ye holy for I am holy. He meant it. Okay, they shall minister unto me and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garment, not cotton, because that's of the lamb. Amen. Clothed with linen garments and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and, and within. You wear linen because everything else will make you sweat. God does not want you sweating. You shouldn't have to sweat in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads. And you're talking about the royal, uh, I mean, the, the uh, priestly garments that they used to wear. Linen garments, bonnets upon their heads. And shall have linen breeches. Breeches. Look at breeches. <laughs> breeches. Amen. Upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. Point blank. Amen. And when they go forth into the um, utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments when they ministered and lay them in holy chambers. What you wore, this is why I believe in robes. I love preaching in robes in the pulpit. Okay, because when you're done, you can take it off, fold it up, and then go. uh, And I forget, there's a term we used to use in the Marine Corps. Uh, civvies, <laughs> you know, you put on your uniform while you're serving the United States, but after the uh, Marine Corps, but when you go out on weekends or whatever, you don't wear your uniform, you wear your what we call the civvies, amen, then they put on their civvies, amen, <laughs> and they shall put on their garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments, amen, neither shall they uh, shave their head, neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the court. Now, this is speaking of drinking wine. I don't know, amen, if uh, it is speaking of period, you know, not drinking wine at all, because it, it, it does say when they enter into the court. I'm not sure. All I know is Israel did use wine, for their festivals. Amen. They had wine for their festivals. Um, only God knows the answer to that. Amen. And in verse 22. 
Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away, but they shall take uh, maidens of the seed of the house of Israel. Amen. They were not allowed to marry widows or divorce women, but they were allowed to marry women who had already had a priest for their husband and most likely had passed. Amen. And I absolutely like verse 23, which tells them to teach people the difference between the holy and the profane. This is what we need today. We need pastors who are going to teach. Don't be afraid to teach about the profane. And a lot of people are afraid to teach about the profane because they know they practice it, i.e., okay, Easter, Christmas, different uh, Halloween. People are so trunk or treat. Come on. Why do you have to pass out candy on Halloween and call it trunk or treat as though that's going to make it sound sweet? Why can't you give out candy all year long? Why does it? Why everybody says, well, yeah, I know it's Halloween, but we're going to do a different thing. We're going to give it a different title. You're doing the same thing that the world is doing. And they will not. There are people right now, there are churches right now that still worship worldly festivals because they're too afraid to tell the truth. Because as I said, they're afraid they're going to lose money. They're afraid they're going to lose people. Let me tell you something. People who tell the, be careful of the people, the people say, oh, they got a big mouth. Oh, no, I don't they, they did this and they did that. And oh, they, they talked to me. No, be careful of that. Because when people talk like that, that person that they're dogging, that person that they're talking about could possibly be a truth teller. Because, you know, when you, when you tell the truth, people don't want to be bothered with you because you might tell them something they don't want to hear. And this is why to this, to this day, we still have preachers that still practice Santa Claus coming into church so the kids can sit on their lap. Easter egg hunts. Come on, guys, let's get real. What does eggs have to do with Jesus? Oh, gee, my Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. What do eggs have to do and chocolate have to do with Jesus rising from the grave to give us victory over sin, hell, and death? And people are still doing it. They still have Easter egg hunts. Afraid to tell the truth. Let's be real. Afraid to tell the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. We are supposed to give people the difference between the holy and the profane. And, and, and teach them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Amen. And they're not doing it today. Point blank. Today, discernment is very off. In fact, some people can't even say discernment. Some people say discernment. Where's the Z? We can't even pronounce the word right. People's discernment is off. Amen. Either discernment is off, is off or people just don't care anymore, folks. It's like we can't tell the difference between a good and a bad. And it's happening every day. Amen. There are so many in the body of Christ who can't tell the difference between the holy between the holy and the profane. Our music is profane, our worship is profane, our praise is profane, our thinking is profane, our preaching is profane. I was listening to songs Saturday, cleaning the house and everything like I do, just you know, going around thanking the Lord for things. I've just decided to listen to a little bit of music Saturday. And I was and I noticed all the songs that we loved back in the day when I was younger are profane. They're nasty. There were babies being born over certain songs that they thought the men was singing to women and they called it so sexy. It was so that was a, and come to find out the man that sang the song was gay. That is deception, folks. Come on. And then they're singing about the loving the devil and doing the devil's work and evil woman, witchy woman. and all. That music. Think about it. Listen to some of the songs that you used to party to and watch the words or type them up on the internet and listen to, watch the words of those songs. Profane, profane, profane. And there are Christians still dancing out there, okay? Instead of dancing for the Lord, they're dancing for the profane. Wait a minute. These are things going on in the pulpit in the church that should not be. There's drinking in the offices. Some preachers get in the pulpit drunk and high and you don't know it. And much, um, am I allowed to say it? Mosex, mosexuality, okay? I guess if I say the whole word, you get strike against your, cha against your channel, amen. Ezekiel speaks of oblation. He uses it 17 times in 12 verses. The Hebrew word that 
easy. It's easy for you to use. Uh, it's different in Hebrew, and it's called, well, they pronounce it korban, amen, which is something brought near to the altar, including meat, amen. Leviticus 2, verse 4, see first fruits in Leviticus chapter 2, verse 12, and heave offerings in Leviticus chapter 7, verse 14. The word Ezekiel uses for this oblation is the Hebrew teruma, it's T-E-R-U-W-M-A-H, meaning a present or a sacrifice given as a tribute. Amen. How many presents have you given to the Lord? Amen. This helps a person to understand the purpose of the sacrifices offered at the temple during Christ's millennial reign as a tribute offering or a present. God, Jesus Christ, was a present to us, offered to us, offered for us. He lost his life because of us. Amen. Jesus lost his life because of you. Amen. The most we can do is accept him as our savior, become saved and trust in him. Trust in the person that lost their life. He had the worst death ever recorded. Are you saved? If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, you could do so right now. All you have to do is repent of your sins and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior, my Lord, and my God. And I want to learn your ways. Thank you for dying on the cross and raising three days later from the dead for me. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. And amen. Amen. If you, if you said that, praise the Lord. Go find a Bible-believing, tongue tongue church, a church that does all the things that they did in, in the New Testament tambourine, in fact, Old Testament, because one of the leaders of Israel was a woman. It was Moses, Aaron, and his sister, Miriam, Mary. And she played, she was a praise and worshiper. She played the tambourine, you know, so cool. Go to a church that allows you to do those things. It allows you to be free in Christ Jesus. No, not allows you to be crazy. Okay, but do those things which are godly, called for through the Bible, through the word of God. Amen. And enjoy your new relationship with Christ Jesus. Find a good church. Find a church where the preacher does studying. He knows what the words mean. He can put one book with the other book and put them together and show you the differences and what they mean. And you know what I mean? Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. And don't let the devil see you sweat. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you everyone for coming on today. I thank the Lord for being able to preach his word, hoping that someone just accepted Jesus Christ, whether now, live, or whether later. Amen. Um, so God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. There's so much happening in the world. We all need peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And he also said, they shall put my name upon uh, Israel. I will put my name upon Israel and I will bless them. Amen. So remember to pray for Israel. And if you get shadow banned, keep on keeping on. Okay. In fact, if you get shadow banned, that's, that's another notch in, in your crown. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Ed, I love you. God bless all of you. To God be the glory for the things he has done. And I will see all of you Hopefully, next Sunday at 10 a.m. <laughs>